class be dismissed tonight. As they are, uh, if you want to turn with us tonight in your Bible, we're going to read from John chapter number 8, beginning at verse number 1. John chapter number 8 beginning with verse number 1 reads like this Jesus went out or went unto the Mount of Olives and early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them and the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery and when they had set her in the midst they say unto him master this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. What sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. They which heard it being convicted in their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Uh, God spoke this to my heart this week concerning this service, and uh, it really challenged me in how I view people and how I am called to witness to people and like Sister Minx was saying, not, I'm not called to be any man's judge, but God helped me some way, somehow, yeah. to be able to reach sinful people. Do you know this world seems to be growing more sinful yeah. every day? If I didn't have a savior living in my heart, I'd just look at this world and say, there's just no hope. Yeah. It's getting worse and worse, but I know there's hope. My hope is in Jesus, and uh, I want to be able to share that hope. I, I, I titled it A Strange Message, and you'll just have to understand it in just a few minutes as I share with you why God had me title it the way I did. But I want to title it The Day Danielle Got Saved. You say, well, I didn't read that was her name. I, the Bible don't say it was her name. I, I named her tonight. Y'all have always wondered what that woman's name was, didn't you? I named her Danielle tonight. Amen. The day Danielle got saved. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. And I thank you for each precious individual, Lord, that you brought and led here by your spirit to the house of God tonight. You've ordained this service for us, O oh God, to hear the word of God. And Lord, to be touched by your spirit in this house tonight. As we've already prayed, let tonight be a night of the miraculous. Let tonight be a night when your arm from heaven is extended, O oh God, to save, to deliver, to heal, to baptize in the power of your spirit. God, when we leave here, we'll just lay it all at your feet and say that it's because of Jesus that I'm saved. It's because of Jesus that I'm healed. It's because of Jesus that I'm healed. It's because of Jesus that I'm a citizen of heaven. My name's in the book of life due to him. We'll give you all the glory for it. We ask it in Christ's lovely name. You love him, would you say? Amen. Amen. I want you to notice first with me that the scribes and Pharisees were accusing this young lady that I've named Danielle. They were accusing her according to the law of Moses. And she was guilty. 
I don't think you can be any more guilty than being caught in the very act. But this was their only recourse. You have to understand the Pharisees are the one bringing the accusation. They are men who live their life after the law. And the law says thou shalt not commit adultery. And all that the law gave them provision to do was accuse this woman of adultery. We know she is an adulteress because we caught her in the very act. And the law says, thou shalt not commit adultery. And the law says, if you commit adultery, it's worthy of death. And that they should be stoned. And Lord, we want to know what you have to say. Adultery was a sin. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. And Jesus said, well, since we're killing people today, anybody that doesn't have any sin, you just start hurling stones. The Bible said that their own conscience pricked them. They all began to drop their stones and, and walk away because they suddenly realized I'm guilty of death as well. Maybe not her sin, but they all had their own sin. And so they were accusing her after the law, but that was their only recourse. It was the only thing the law could do for this woman was accuse her and condemn her for her acts. She was guilty and deserve to die according to the law of Moses. Again in Exodus 20 and 14, thou shalt not commit adultery. Leviticus 20 and 10, and the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Right. I only read where they just want to stone her. I hadn't you ever wondered where was he at? Yeah. But, I know what somebody's thinking. Man, I'm glad I didn't live under the law. But do you know in 2021, we live according to the law? We're not living under the law, but we live according to the law. Isn't that right? Yes. We're not adulterers, are we? Y'all better say amen. <laughs> I'm fixing to change my best. <laughs> I, I want to say that to say the law was not evil. The law was good. Romans 7 and verse 7. What should we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law said thou shalt not covet. Right. But sin taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once. That was as a baby or a young child. He lived in innocence. He said, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. Or I discovered after the law came that I was living in sin, and I realized I was worthy of death. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to me that it was unto death. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it, or by the commandment, it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal and sold unto sin. That was the apostle's testimony before he encountered Christ and was born again. We read in Galatians 3 and 21, Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith 
of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith, which should be afterwards or which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we're no longer under a schoolmaster. Romans 8 and verse number 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, here's the important part, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live after the flesh, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify or put to death the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. We find in our text men who wanted to kill the woman for her sin. You understand under the law, if there was adultery in the church, the only way you could get adultery out of the church would be kill the adulterer. That's right. Take her out of the church and stone her then you won't have adultery in the church anymore because the law could not forgive her. Right. The law could only show her she was a sinner. That's right, the law could not pardon her. The law could not justify or acquit her. The law could not redeem her. Yeah. That's right. The law showed me, God said, that the law came to show me, to teach me. It was a schoolmaster, a teacher, a professor to show me that Sullivan is no good. Right. Sullivan can't live up to God's holy standard. Sullivan is going to need a redeemer. Yeah. He's going to need a savior. He's going to need somebody who can not only take away his sin, but can also impart or put righteousness in him. Give him a change of nature, a change of heart, and allow him. The, uh, uh, the best definition of it is in John chapter 1, I believe, verse number 12. And unto as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Peter described it like this. You have been made partakers of the divine nature. Yeah. The divine nature is the nature of Christ. It's our, it was our fallen nature to do evil, but it was Christ's nature to be holy yeah. because God is holy. We find in our text men who wanted to kill the woman for the sin, but also in our text we see a Christ who wanted to kill the sin for the woman. Right. Isn't that awesome? That's good. Right. You got Pharisees that kill the woman because of the sin. And Christ steps up and said, I came to kill the sin for the woman. Yeah. yeah. That's good. I seen him pronounce judgment on the sin. The Bible said what the law couldn't do and that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh 
and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned sin in the flesh. When did he do it? He said, go and sin no more. And what Christ gives you commandment to do, he reinforces the commandment by giving you his spirit to, to be able to do it. Not by might nor by power, but it is by my spirit, saith the Lord. Woo! I'm about to have a shout and spell. Thinking about, uh, it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. I can do all things uh, through Christ which strengtheneth me. Yeah. He said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet it's not I that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Listen in. We, we see the stones of the Pharisees were intended to kill the woman because they could not redeem the woman. But Christ also had stones of his own that day. They weren't earthly stones. His stones were made up of the word of God. His stones were spiritual. In John 6 and verse 63, it is the spirit that quickened it is the spirit that uh, raises you up. That's what quickeneth means. It is the spirit that uh, revives you or brings you to life from the dead. That's what that word is intended to mean. It's the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit uh, and they are life. Jesus intended to kill on this day, but not in the same way the Pharisees intended to kill. Had they came to Jesus with a right motive, a motive of redemption instead of condemnation, he may have very well have asked them, bring this woman to me and I'll kill her. Yeah. Amen. That's right. That is the old carnal nature that's, right. that's in the woman. Yeah. That's what I'll kill. I won't condemn her, but I will condemn the sin that holds her back. I'm not going to kill her, but I'll kill the sin nature in her. You say, did he do it? You better believe he done it. Yes, sir. He killed an adulterous woman that day, but a virtuous woman went home to her husband. That's right. He killed Jacob in the book of Genesis, but Israel Cross back over the Ford Jack. That's right. He killed Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. But Saul left as Paul the Apostle. He killed Simon Barjona. And Peter was born into the kingdom yes, sir. of God. Right. So. Why'd you name that girl Danielle, Brother Eddie? I know you, I know you wanted to ask me that. As I was reading this text, God dealt with me about how that Jesus, these men wanted to judge her with condemnation, but I'm glad that people are not my judge. God's not finished with me. God is not through with me. He's still working and moving in my heart and in my life. I'm thankful for it. I'm glad that when Jesus, you know, everybody I mentioned tonight, this woman, he killed the adultery in her and sent her home a virtuous woman. Killed Jacob in Genesis and sent him home as Israel. He killed Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus, and he left as the Apostle Paul. He killed Simon Barjona as one of his disciples, and he was reborn as Peter. I'm glad God doesn't throw us away. Jonah said, throw me overboard. Throw me off the ship. I'm the problem. I'm the backslidden preacher. 
I'm the one walking in disobedience. If you throw me over and just kill me, the storm will be over with. Jonah may have been so miserable in his sin that he wanted to die. I'm glad God was his judge. Sometimes uh, if we were our own judge, uh, we, we wouldn't even have mercy on ourselves. I said if we were our own judge, we would be our own worst sinner. We wouldn't even be merciful to our own self half the time. We would just say, just end it all. Just throw it up. I can't live it. I can't do it. But God prepared a fish to swallow Jonah to keep that man alive. Aren't you glad God's your judge tonight? Aren't you glad that when Jesus rose from the grave after Peter having denied him three times. Don't you remember when he asked him, who do you say that I, the son of man, am? And Peter said, me, 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 I'll answer. I say that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah. For flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Simon Bar Jonah became Peter on that day in Christ's eyes. But do you remember that that very same Simon Bar Jonah called Peter denied Christ three times? Denied him three times in the garden. Don't know him. Oh yeah, you know him. I've seen you with him. You talk like him. Your speech betrays him. I'm telling you, I don't know him. And he cursed. That's right. I can tell you if anybody deserves to be thrown overboard, it's a cussing preacher. <laughs> Jesus been in the grave three days and the last time he seen Peter the rooster was crowing Peter was under heavy conviction because he remembered when he said Lord I'll never betray you I'll go to prison for you I'll even die for you I would never betray you and Jesus said before the cock crows you will have denied me three times and when that rooster crowed he was under heavy conviction and when Jesus rose from the grave and he spoke to Mary, he said, go and tell my disciples and Peter that I go before them into Galilee and there they'll see me. Right. They were there. Peter hasn't seen him yet. He had been hoping against all hope that the story was true and that the Lord had really forgiven him and that he was going to get to be a part of the disciples again and Maybe the plan wasn't wrecked by the crucifixion after all. And when Jesus didn't show up on his time schedule, he said, I'm going fishing. Yeah. That's what he was before Jesus found him. And when Jesus found him, he had fished all night and caught nothing. Yeah. And the Bible said that while they were out fishing, it was at night and that they had caught nothing. When the morning broke, Jesus is standing on the shore. He's got a fire built. He's got bread cooking. He hollers out to them in the boat. He said, children, have you any meat? Hey, men, have you caught anything? And they said, no. He said, cast your net on the right side. You'll make a catch. They cast their net on the right side and they couldn't hardly pull the net up for all the fish. John looked at Peter. He said, that's the Lord. He looked at Peter and he said, you remember the last time this happened? Three and a half years ago. The day you met Jesus. That's the Lord. He had brought him full circle yeah. back to where it all began. When they come in to the shore, he said, Peter, 
Lovest thou me more than these? More than all these fish that you just hauled in, do you love me? Or do you want to go back to being what you were before you found me? Lord, I love you. He said, you need to feed my sheep. He asked him three times. The Bible don't say, and I've never read commentary that said, but I believe he asked him three times because Peter denied him three times. Yeah. When he asked him the third time, lovest thou me, he was grieved in his heart. He said, Lord, you know all things, and you know that I love you. He said, feed my lambs. You know what? If it was me, and I had invested three years into a person, and I'd been gone for, I'd invest three years, but I'm gone three days. He says, I'm going back to what I used to do. I'm not doing this anymore. How discouraging would that be? You know, Jesus would have had every right to say, Peter, you know what? I'm starting over. And you're off the list, buddy. You're out. But I'm glad that the God who changed his name from Simon Barjona to Peter, a rock. I'm glad that he said, I'm not throwing Peter away. He said, I'm going to build that boy a fire. That's right. now, I don't think Jesus rubbed two sticks together, created a friction fire. This is the same resurrected Christ that said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I believe he looked down there at some sticks and said, spark up. Give me a fire. Same way he lit that bush on fire and spoke to Moses, I believe he told that spot to catch fire. When the devil tried to tempt him as the man, Christ Jesus, before his resurrection, before he was glorified, he said, turn those stones into bread and I'll believe in you. And he said, nope. Man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I don't have no proof, but the Bible don't say how the bread got there. I've been to the Sea of Galilee. And they got those big, round, flat stones about that thick, about that big round. It looks like it could be made into a good piece of bread. I believe he looked down at them stones and said, Hey, devil, watch this. Stones be bread. My boys is fixing to eat a fish sandwich. <laughs> How does God deal with disobedient children? He makes a fire for them. Come on. That's good. He, he, he says you just, need, you just need some fresh fire in your life. That's what you need. And what happens around the fire is he exposes you. Peter... How did it work out for you? You remember when you caught all them fish the first time those three years ago when I was in the boat with you and all those fish you caught? Uh, yeah. How did it work out for you again? I wasn't in the boat. Tell me how many fish you caught without me. None. Tell me how good it's going for you without me is miserable. You, love, you sure you love this and want to do this more than what you love me and want to serve me? He said, no, Lord, I love you. I love you. He's, he's looking for repentance and he's looking for confession. He's restoring Peter. He is killing the sin in that man's life and he is quickening that man by his spirit back to life. You're seeing the resurrection of Peter. The cussing preacher, the one who denied him three times and went back to what he was before Jesus. You watching his resurrection, his restoration. Yeah. Why'd you call that girl Danielle? Because over and over I kept saying to God, I'm so glad that man is not my judge, that you are. Because I'd be quick. When I'm looking at this world, I'd be quick to write it off. Yeah. Say there's no help and there's no hope. Outsiders would do the same to us. Looking at, if 
you were out there in sin and you looked at the shape the church was in, somebody invited you to church, church is in pitiful shape. Ain't nothing there for me. Church is pitiful. I don't need church. Don't want to go to church. Nothing in church for me. I'm glad they don't have the final say. And I'm glad you don't have the final say about them. I'm glad tonight God yes, is the judge. Amen. That's good. Jesus said that the Father have given unto him to be the judge over all things. Jesus said they brought that girl to me. I looked up. He, God spoke my heart in prayer and he said, I want you to look up the name in the Bible. He said, there's a name in the Bible that means God is my judge. I want you to look it up. I looked it up, found it real quick. Daniel. Daniel's name means God is my judge. And the Lord said, I was that girl's judge. Whatever her Hebrew name was, and I'm sure it was a name that I may not even be able to properly pronounce. He said, I changed Simon Barjona's name to Peter. I changed Saul of Tarsus to the Apostle Paul. I changed Jacob to Israel. And he said, you can just call that girl, not Daniel, but Danielle. God is my judge. Don't write me off. Don't say that God can and won't work in my life because he can and he will. I plead the blood. Yes, sir. Yes. I plead the blood of Jesus. And I ask him tonight to quicken me by his spirit. I ask him to quicken his body, the, the body of Jesus Christ. You're going to write the church off as dead when this body is the body of Jesus Christ going to write the church off as dead when he by his own words said he'll quicken your mortal body by his spirit that, that lives in you don't write the church off don't write that world off Jesus is a savior tonight Miss Pamela Jesus is a healer tonight Jesus is a Holy Ghost baptizer. You're going to find out real soon that Jesus is our soon coming King. Curse if you come help me. We're going to open the altar up for prayer. Miss Pamela called me today. She just told me, she said, I want to come. Don't know that I can sit through a complete service, but I want to come. I'm sick and I need healing. She had mentioned, talked to Morgan, the bait shop, how God healed him. She made reference to Brother Ray and Sister Faye, heard their testimony, how that God's healed both of them. Many of you believe that God can heal her in this house tonight. I mean, really. Yes, healing. She can leave here made whole in her body. He's an awesome God. And I'm glad he's my judge tonight. If you need the Lord to quicken you, if there's that besetting sin in you, and the enemy says, you know what? God has canceled you out of his plan because you keep hanging on to your sin. And you need to make that same confession an affirmation of your faith and your love and your allegiance just like Peter did. When the Lord says to you, do you love that more than you love me? You need to settle it in your heart tonight and say, no, Lord, I love you. The Lord asks again, are you sure you love me more than you love this world or your sin or whatever's robbing you of your peace and your victory? No, Lord, I'm real sure I love you. You're going to hear him say what he told that girl that I'm naming Danielle. Good. Now go.
go and sin no more. Walk in my victory. Walk in my grace. Walk in my anointing. Walk in my power. Walk in my love. I'll keep you. Amen. If you're able, I want you to come. I want some of you ladies that will. Sister Faye. And then some of you other ladies. Sister Linda. It's the Lord good to see Miss Pamela come in. I trust that's her. Talk to her on the phone today. Amen. Just praying that God's going to meet us here in a special way tonight. We're going to sing one more before we jump into the Word of God tonight. You worship with us.
God help